So let's start with this big news from the House, which just passed the $2.2 trillion stimulus package to help the economy during this pandemic. Wall Street has not really responded with a massive uptick. It's actually been a down day after three straight sort of good days. But the $2 trillion plan is expected to help dramatically. President Trump has said he'll sign it immediately. The legislation was passed unanimously by the U.S. Senate on Wednesday. It got held up today by a Republican congressman from Kentucky, Thomas Massey, who angered both parties and and President Trump by insisting many of his colleagues come back to vote in person, but enough of them did and kept their social distancing as best possible, and it overwhelmingly passed the House, and it'll provide financial relief for millions of workers and businesses across the country. It could also mean more money for workers who don't qualify for unemployment, although Washington State and some other states are making efforts to help in case there isn't enough money to go around. So the stimulus bill provides some kinds of assistance for gig workers like freelancers, independent contractors, and it gives benefits to people who don't qualify for traditional benefits, musicians, hairdressers, some software engineers. State Senator Karen Kaiser, a Democrat from Des Moines, says if Congress enacts a disaster unemployment assistant program, a DUA, it's usually used after disasters like hurricanes, it could speed up the process for individuals and give relief to states. She's hoping people who have lost their jobs can hold on a little longer until more details are found out. My hope is that we'll have this resolved by the end of the week, this week. Uh, whether the program can be up and running by next week is a good question. I think if it is the DUA approach, it will be much faster than if it's a new federal bureaucracy created by Congress in this agreement. And I just don't know myself. We have inquiries into our congressional delegation. They say they're working on it, but it's very, very complicated right now. So again, the, now that the stimulus uh, package has passed, we'll start learning all the details and the communication will begin between federal and state uh, governments. So how much money could you get? Do we have a stimulus check calculator up and running on our website to kind of help you out and answer some basic questions? Text the word check to us at 206-448-4545, and we'll send you a link. As always, check with a financial advisor for your specific situation. So all of this comes as we continue to get in staggering numbers, as we talked about yesterday. In just one week, unemployment claims in Washington state up 843%. So we talked with a former server, Rebecca Simmons, and like so many other people, she is struggling to get financial help after losing her job this month. She tried to sign up for unemployment benefits, but has had trouble getting her claim approved. It is frustrating, especially when, you know, I have no income coming in now, and I was working. So unemployment claims from people specifically working in accommodation like hotels or food services, that alone jumped more than 1,000% for health care and social assistance. Look, 2,000 and retail up 1,000% as well. So we have another resource available for you if you text the word jobs to us at 206-448-4545, the same number. We have all these different keywords. We'll send you back a list, though. If it says jobs, you'll get the list of companies that are hiring right now if you need income and can work you have a potential opportunity there. School districts across Washington state are preparing for the possibility of longer and longer closures than they originally planned. And because of that, the state superintendent is setting a new deadline for schools to begin online learning. King 5's Kira L. Fallen in Kent with details. Well, initially it was more of an option for school districts across the state to decide if they wanted to come up with some kind of remote learning tool, and a lot of schools actually did end up doing this. Well, now the state is making it a requirement for all school districts across the state to have some kind of continuous learning in place so that students can actually start this by Monday. So Washington's Office of Superintendent of Public Instruction staff are saying now is the time to come up with more specific guidelines when it comes to continuous student learning. So this doesn't have to mean online. OSPI staff says districts can use printed learning materials, phone, email, or technology-based instructions, or even a combination of these tools to meet students' needs. Most Washington schools have already started engaging students and families by providing learning from home, but now the state is expecting this from all schools by Monday, March 30th. Whether it's distributing packets and it's a pen and paper and a telephone, um, all the way up to districts and schools that we know have one-to-one -one technology for their students. Soon, OSPI plans to collect information when it comes to nutrition services, educational services, and child care to make sure that school districts across the state are providing continuous education and also to make sure that students are really getting the meals that they would have been getting if they were in school 
they want to make sure they're still getting those meals. OSPI also plans to make it a top priority for graduating high school seniors to make sure that they are getting all the content they need to make sure they're meeting requirements for post graduation plans that they already have. From Kent, I'm Kira L. Fallen, King 5 News. Meantime, schools that are already online all the time, they're doing their part to help the community. Insight School of Washington and Washington Virtual Academies have donated some much needed cleaning supplies to the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department. Tacoma Health Department is right up the road and we thought, um, why not share what we have? Um, and when we first called them, they were so excited and said, oh, are you willing to give these to us at cost? And we said, no, no, we, we want to give them to you. The donation includes a pallet of hand wipes and sanitizer. Seattle Public Schools and the City of Seattle are teaming up to open five child care sites focused on families of first responders and medical staff. They, these people have to work and the kids need somewhere to be. So these sites will open April 6th and serve K through 5. They'll open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and they will provide food. They still don't know exactly where the location will be. The coronavirus has hit another nursing home hard in our area. The situation is so serious at a facility in Bellingham that volunteer nurses are being called in to help save lives. King 5's Eric Wilkinson reports. At least 26 patients have tested positive for the coronavirus at Shuxon Healthcare, the latest nursing home to be hit by the deadly disease. Lieutenant Claudia Murphy with Whatcom Unified Command. Uh, the residents in there are in the highest um, category of folks who are affected the most by this. But also affected are at least six caregivers at the facility. With staff depleted, the call has gone out for help. Answering that call, eight nurses and assistants from Peace Health St. Joseph Medical Center. Already working long hours in the hospital, they volunteered for duty in a hot zone where people are dying. Residents are positive with the, with the virus and they're very, very ill and they recognize that they need very good skilled care and they are willing to provide that and that is an unbelievable thing and they should be lauded for it. The staff at Peace Health have even gone so far as to provide food for everyone at Chuckson. Three meals a day, every day. Chief Nursing Officer Rosanna Bell couldn't be um, more proud. Would really applaud the entire community in wrapping our arms around that one facility and um, really ensuring that they have everything they need. The good work being done by these nurses and staff is being recognized by this community. A small garden of signs grows outside the hospital expressing deep appreciation. In my mind, they are some of the true heroes, the staff and caregivers that are working at Chuckson, the families of those um, patients, what they're going through is um, incredibly challenging. In Bellingham, Eric Wilkinson, King 5 News. 1207, let's give you a live look at CenturyLink Field with no Sounders games, no concerts, no conventions. You'd think it could be used as a makeshift hospital or quarantine site, but could it? Amy Marino joins us outside the clink with more. Well, this talk started yesterday when Lieutenant General Todd Samsonite from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers was appearing on Rachel Maddow's talk show, and he was talking about how the Army Corps of Engineers is trying to help in each state. Well, she asked how the states go about getting that help, and here was his response. So we checked with the governor's office to find out how this is going to work, and then they referred us to the military. The Washington Military Department said no site has been confirmed yet. Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin tweeted yesterday that the city has worked tirelessly, but they need federal help and said city staff have been working to secure a site so they can get a military field hospital set up quickly. Now, they've been working to increase hospital and quarantine capacity around the county. You might remember this site in Shoreline where they converted a soccer field into a temporary site constructing this building in just a few days. Now, in that interview, the Army Corps of Engineers said they can build something like that at CenturyLink through FEMA or the state can do it. Now, at a Pentagon briefing yesterday, military leaders said an advance team actually arrived out here on Wednesday. They toured CenturyLink. They were looking also at a state fairground. Now, 300 soldiers are on their way here from Fort Carson. They're going to be helping with emergency and routine medical work, trying to take the strain off of local doctors and nurses who have been working so hard to get a handle on this outbreak. In Seattle, Amy Marino, King 5 News. New at noon, the city of Seattle is building on 1,900 new temporary housing options. The goal is to expand resources for people who are homeless. The city is also deploying six new hygiene stations. Starting tomorrow, 14 toilets and six hand-washing stations will be near six parks. 
They'll be open seven days a week from seven in the morning till eight at night, and they'll be cleaned daily as well. In addition to the portable toilets, the city expects to deploy at least four hygiene trailers with showers, toilets, and hand washing stations soon. Also new at noon, Snohomish County ramping up its response efforts to fight coronavirus. County health officials announcing earlier this morning that FEMA has delivered the first trailer of personal protection equipment. It's not clear exactly what the equipment is, but FEMA is also sending hundreds of hospital beds to the county as Snohomish schools are among those prepping to begin remote learning on Monday.